there are places in the Florida Everglades where even the locals refuse to go. It's not just the heat or the insects or the endless maze of sawgrass. It's a feeling, a sense that the water is watching you. For thousands of years, we knew exactly what was watching. We knew the kings of this swamp. We knew the rules. But in 2009, those rules were broken. It started with a silence. The loudest, most dominant predators in North America, creatures that have survived since the time of the dinosaurs, suddenly went quiet. They abandoned their best hunting grounds. They fled their ancestral nesting sites. The apex predators of Florida were running away. But what does a dinosaur run from? For months, biologists were baffled. They found carcasses of massive reptiles torn apart with a violence that didn't make sense. Whatever was hunting them wasn't just killing for food. It was clearing the board. It was an invasion that no one saw coming, hiding in plain sight, deep in the murky water. When scientists finally trapped the culprit, the DNA results didn't just scare them, it terrified them. It revealed a secret that the state of Florida tried desperately to contain. A secret that implies the swamps you thought you knew are now home to a monster that looks at humans not as threats, but as food. This isn't a story about nature taking its course. This is the story of how the deadliest man-eater in history crossed an ocean, infiltrated the United States, and started hunting the American dream. To understand the magnitude of this threat, you have to understand the delicate balance of the battlefield. The Everglades is often called the River of Grass, a serene expanse of slow-moving water. But make no mistake, it is a war zone. Resources are scarce and competition is brutal. For eons, this war had two generals. First, the American alligator, the brute, the tank. They are the heavy enforcers of the freshwater marshes, possessing a bite force that can snap a turtle shell like a potato chip. Then there is the ghost of the coast, the American crocodile. Unlike the alligator, the American croc is shy. It is a reclusive gray-green phantom that sticks to the salty brackish water. And here is the most important statistic you need to no. In the entire history of the United States, there has never been a confirmed fatal attack by an American crocodile on a human. They want nothing to do with us. These two species struck a truce. Alligators stayed in the fresh water. Crocodiles stayed in the salt. They respected the boundaries. They kept the peace. But in 2009, the peace shattered. It began with whispers among the airboat captains, men who have spent their entire lives on the water. They know every gator by sight. They know which logs are actually living dinosaurs. They started noticing that the big males, the dominant crocodiles that had held the prime territory for a decade, had vanished. At first, scientists assumed they had just moved, but then they found the nests. The nesting sites, usually fiercely defended by mothers, were empty. The nurseries, which should have been teeming with hatchlings, were silent. Then came the bodies. Rangers began finding the remains of top-tier predators in canals where they shouldn't be. These weren't natural deaths. These animals had been obliterated. The injuries suggested a level of aggression and power that didn't match anything on the roster. The local rumor mill went into overdrive. Everyone pointed the finger at the usual suspect, the Burmese python. We've all seen the headlines. Giant snakes, eating deer, eating gators, taking over the swamp. It made sense. The pythons were getting bigger. Maybe they had finally become bold enough to target the kings of the Everglades, but the forensics didn't add up. A python kills by constriction. It wraps and squeezes. The dead crocodiles hadn't been squeezed. They had been broken. They had been outmuscled and ripped apart. The biologists realized with a sinking feeling that they were looking for a predator that was stronger than an alligator, faster than a python, and more aggressive than anything native to this continent. The breakthrough happened by accident. A team from the University of Florida was called out to capture a nuisance crocodile near Miami. The location was already a red flag. It was miles away from the saltwater habitats where American crocs live. It was in a freshwater canal, dangerously close to human suburbs. When they pulled the animal onto to the bank, the team froze. It looked like a crocodile. But it felt wrong. It was the uncanny valley of reptiles. The snout was too broad. The scales were too dark. A deep, menacing olive black instead of the familiar gray. But the real giveaway was the attitude. A young American crocodile is skittish. It wants to escape. This animal wanted to fight. It snapped with a ferocity and boldness that shocked the handlers. It held its ground. They took a DNA sample, but even before the results came back, they noticed something else in the data. These strange crocodiles were growing fast. Too fast. They were 
outpacing the native species by nearly 30%. They were eating more, growing bigger, and fighting harder. When the lab results finally arrived, the lead researchers stared at the paper in disbelief. The DNA didn't match the American crocodile. It didn't match the alligator. It was a perfect genetic match for Crocodilus niloticus, the Nile crocodile. The gravity of this revelation is hard to overstate. This wasn't just a new lizard in the swamp. The Nile crocodile is widely considered the most dangerous predator on the planet. While the American crocodile has killed zero people in the US, the Nile crocodile is a machine of death. In its native Africa, it is responsible for hundreds of human fatalities. Every single year, they are not shy. They are not reclusive. They are ambush predators that actively hunt large mammals. They view humans as just another slow-moving protein source on the riverbank. They can grow to 18 feet long and weigh as much as a compact car. Their bite force rivals the T-Rex. And now they were swimming in the canals of South Florida, just a few miles from schools, golf courses, and neighborhoods. But the most terrifying part wasn't that they were here. It was how long they had been here. The DNA analysis showed that the captured crocodiles were genetically identical. This meant they were siblings. They weren't random escapees that got loose yesterday. They were a breeding population. They had been out there breeding, hunting, and surviving for years right under our noses. They had camouflaged themselves perfectly among the native species, hiding in plain sight while they established a foothold. And unlike the American crocodile, which is sensitive to cold, the Nile croc is tough. It can handle cooler temperatures. This meant the invasion wasn't stuck in the Everglades. The door was wide open for these man-eaters to move north, up the coast, into populated lakes and rivers where people swim and fish without a second thought. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission immediately went into crisis mode. They launched a massive hunt, scouring the canals and swamps. They managed to capture several more of the beasts, but the question that kept them awake at night was simple. How many did we miss? Because in a swamp that covers over a million acres, you can never be sure you caught the last one. If even one breeding pair remains, or if a female has already laid a hidden clutch of eggs, the clock resets. If the Nile crocodile establishes a permanent population in Florida, life changes. The river of grass becomes a no-go zone. The state's multi-billion dollar tourism industry takes a massive hit. You can't tell tourists to go kayaking in mangroves if there's a chance they'll be pulled under by an African super predator. The signs that warn do not feed the alligators would have to be replaced with signs that say danger man-eaters area. It fundamentally alters our relationship with the wild. But as the dust settled on the investigation, a darker truth emerged. This wasn't a natural disaster. It was a crime scene. These monsters didn't swim 6,000 miles across the Atlantic Ocean. They didn't hitch a ride on a hurricane. They were brought here. DNA tracking suggests these animals originated from the exotic pet trade. Someone, somewhere, decided they wanted the ultimate status symbol. They bought a cute, exotic hatchling. But when that hatchling grew into a 10-foot dinosaur that looked at its owner like a steak dinner, they panicked. And instead of doing the responsible thing, they drove out to the swamp, opened the cage, and drove away. That single act of cowardice and negligence unleashed an ecological nightmare. It's a pattern we see over and over again, from the pythons to the iguanas and now the Nile crocodile, the Everglades, is being punished for human greed. We have spent decades destroying the habitat of our native crocodiles, paving over their mangroves and polluting their water. We weakened the kings of the swamp, leaving them vulnerable. And then we threw a monster into the ring with them. The authorities believe they have contained the threat. They say the Nile crocodiles have been removed, but every biologist knows that absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. The Everglades is vast, deep, and full of secrets. We spent spent years watching the water, afraid of snakes. We didn't realize that deep in the darkness, something else was watching us back. Something ancient, something hungry. So the next time you stand by the edge of a Florida canal, looking at the dark water, ask yourself, do you trust that they caught them all? Or is there still a king waiting in the deep to reclaim his throne? If you want to see more deep dives into the mysteries of the natural world and the creatures that haunt them, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss what we uncover next.